Hello everyone, welcome to the Wall Street TV channel. This video was recorded on April 30, 2018, Eastern Time. In this episode, we will focus on Xi Jinping finally putting the timing of the third plan on the public agenda. Welcome to our hot topic in depth. Attention has been drawn to the announcement of the third plenum of the 18th each Central Committee of the Communist Party of China. Some observers believe that Xi Jinping has been holding back for so long and delaying it for nearly half a year because this third plenum carries unusual significance and weight. However, this unusual aspect is completely different from the third plenum in 1970, when Deng Xiaoping brought about a crucial decision on the political line of the Communist Party of China. On April 30th, Beijing time, the Political Bureau of the Communist Party of China CPC Central Committee held a meeting and decided to convene the third plenary session of the 20th CPC Central Committee in Beijing in July this year. The main agenda is for the Political Bureau of the CPC Central Committee to report its work to the Central Committee and to focus on further comprehensively deepening reform and promoting the issue of Chinese modernization in the Chinese style. The meeting analyzed and studied the current economic situation and economic work, and reviewed the opinions on continuously promoting the high-quality development of the Yangtze River Delta integration. General Secretary of the Communist Party of China, Xi Jinping presided over the meeting. The third plenary session of the Communist Party of China usually focuses on issues related to the direction of economic and reform policies, and is often held between September and December of the year following the Party Congress attracting significant attention. The 20th National Congress of the Communist Party of China is scheduled to be held in October 2022, and the third plenary session of the 20th Central Committee should be held between September and December 2023. In other words, according to historical patterns, this third plenary session is approximately delayed by six months from the original plan time 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 marking the first time in 30 years that it is held outside of the planned time frame. The South China Morning Post site report highlights that the Chinese official media's in Hua news agencies report mentions that while China's economy continues to rebound and improve, it still faces many challenges. The main challenges include insufficient effective demand, significant pressure on business operations, numerous risks and hidden dangers in key areas, and insufficiently smooth domestic circulation, and a rising complexity, severity, and uncertainty in the external environment. The third plenum traditionally responsible for formulating economic strategies for the next five to ten years is usually seen as the most important of the seven meetings held by the party central committee within a five-year cycle. The 370 best formal and alternate members of the new central committee will attend this five-day meeting. It is expected to be a decisive moment for Xi Jinping as the party's leader in his third five-year term, covering a wide range of goals from economic to social development and national construction. The meeting is also expected to approve a widely encompassing communique, with officials at all levels analyzing the communique and attempting to uh, propose methods to achieve the goals set out in the document. This is the first time since 1984 that the party has not held a third plenum of the Central Committee in the year following the party congress held every 10 years. The last party congress was held in the autumn of 2022, the year in which Xi Jinping began his third term as party general secretary. In the past few decades, the timing of the third plenum has always been to send policy signals for the next five-year term to the party and the public in advance. The Chinese government did not explain the reason for the postponement of the third plenum in its statement on Tuesday, but China has been grappling with a series of serious challenges, including weak economic recovery, severe geopolitical challenges, and ongoing purges within the leadership. The Chinese government has not provided detailed information on the agenda of the July 2024 plenary session, only stating that the focus will be on further comprehensive deepening of reforms and advancing the issue of China's modernization. This meeting will also be held before the end of the year thus meeting the requirement in the party constitution of holding at least one plenary session annually. Then Yuan, former deputy editor-in-chief of the official newspaper of the Central Party School, said that Xi Jinping did not hold a plenary session last year possibly because his fourth quarter was very compact and there was no urgent need to approve his political agenda. In October, he hosted the Third Belt and Road Initiative International Cooperation Summit Forum in November. He attended the Asia-Pacific Economic Cooperation Summit held in the United States and met with U.S. President Biden. 
Zheng Yiwen believes that the former was the most important diplomatic event in China last year, and the latter was the most important bilateral meeting. Both of these events require his full dedication. Zimao Song, a senior researcher at the National Institute of Strategic Studies at Tingshui University, said that the postponement of the plenary session indicates that the leadership attaches great importance to the next round of reforms. They do not want to make major decisions hastily. Last year marked the 40th TH anniversary of Deng Xiaoping's reform and opening up, as well as the 10th anniversary of Xi Jinping's reform and opening up. These milestone events occurred without convening a plenary session. Instead, the leadership chose to spend more time listening to different opinions within the party and reaching consensus within the party, because they know that the new reforms brought about by the third plenum will have a significant impact on China's economic development in the next five to ten years. Xi Maosang said that the announcement of the third plenum also demonstrates the confidence of Chinese leaders before the U.S. presidential election in November. Xi Maosang believes that Beijing has no illusions about U.S.-China relations. The Democratic and Republican parties in the United States have reached a consensus on containing China. Therefore, regardless of who wins the U.S. election, China will continue to focus on its own development and respond to challenges. However, Assistant Professor Wang Yu, Sheng from the Department of Philosophy at the University of Hong Kong, said that he does not believe there is any particular connection between the timing of the plenum and the U.S. election. Wang believes that the focus of the plenum has always been on the domestic economy and balancing or addressing the interests of domestic stakeholders. If the plenum is to be held this summer, it indicates that the current leadership is confident in successfully addressing any potential internal disunity or challenges, Wang said. The focus on the third plan then is because, in addition to announcing economic policy signals, the third plan is usually a place to showcase party unity and provide updates on investigations into dismissed senior officials. Little information has been obtained from the Chinese government regarding the reasons for the dismissal of former Foreign Minister Qin Gang and former Defense Minister Li Shanfu last year. Qin Gang was China's shortest serving Foreign Minister. He disappeared in June last year and subsequently lost all remaining titles in the government. Li Shangfu was China's shortest serving defense minister. He has been missing since August and has also lost all titles. To formally expel these two individuals from the Central Committee, a formal resolution must be passed during the plenum. The plenum may also reveal the leadership's decision on the membership status of Li Yuqiao in the Central Committee. Li Yuqiao is the former commander of the Chinese People's Liberation Army Rocket Force and is currently under investigation for corruption, but still holds a position in the Central Committee. In addition to announcing the convening of the July meeting, the Central Political Bureau has also issued a series of warnings on economic issues, stating that domestic social and economic policies must be coordinated and focused on practical results. The Political Bureau said in a statement by Xinhu, a news agency, Many enterprises face significant operational pressures. We will support private enterprises in exploring overseas markets while increasing efforts to attract and utilize foreign investment. The report states that the government should accelerate the issuance of ultra long term special bonds while ensuring that provinces, cities, and counties facing high debt risks reduce their debt burdens. Reuters reported that the third plenum of the Central Committee of the Communist Party of China CPC is often centered around reform. The most famous third plenum was held in December 1970 under the leadership of former CPC elder Deng Xiaoping, which initiated the process of reform and opening up in China after the Cultural Revolution. The third plenum held in November 2013 decided to give the market a decisive role in allocating economic resources. However, the early third plenum held in February 2018 called for the entire CPC to unite closely around the party central committee with Xi Jinping at its core, and proposed the removal of the constitutional provision limiting the leader's term to two terms. A few days later, the rubber stamp Chinese National People's Congress voted to abolish a provision in the constitution that limits the leader to two terms, potentially allowing Xi Jinping to rule for life. News observer Mr. He TV shared the view that this third plenum of the 2024-24, unlike the previous third plenums during Deng Xiaoping's era which brought about corrections in political lines, does not mean a sudden shift in China's policy. Instead, it is a systematic implementation of some of Xi Jinping's ideas, as well as a decision-making and document to every party entire party in terms of policies and theories. The transformation of China's economic system has actually entered a deep water zone during Xi Jinping's era. 
What China wants to do is precisely to carry out non-political economic reforms without undergoing political system changes. This approach is different from most transitional countries. Other countries first start with political system reform and then proceed with economic reform. But the results have mostly been failures. The Chinese Communist Party, on the other hand, has adopted a very conservative approach to reform, even appearing to regress and become rigid. With a certain Mao Zedong and Marxist ideological color, however, beneath this surface, the economic system reform carried out by China has made Chinese enterprises highly competitive, far surpassing Western enterprises. This economic strength has actually caught many economists off guard. China has managed to achieve tremendous economic growth without the support of a perfect legal system. The power of this strength is so great that it can ignore the collapse of the real estate market and the financial black holes of local governance. The convening of the third plenary session this time signifies that China's traditional industries will be strong and will not heed the calls of Western politicians. Moreover, China will play a leading role in new technologies, especially in the areas of new energy and artificial intelligence. This will make the United States increasingly anxious. The United Morning Post believes that the upcoming third plenum of the 20th Central Committee of the Communist Party of China, scheduled for July, is expected to set the direction for reform in the next five to ten years, seeking a balance between risks and opportunities. Compared to the past five years, last five years, there will be much greater uncertainty in China's future. There are geopolitical risks externally. And internally, there are multiple major changes to face, such as population decline, economic transformation, and a downturn in the property market. Desmond Kua, head of research and strategy for Asia at OCBC Bank, stated in an interview with the United Morning Post, the decision-making level may need more time to sort out their thoughts in order to set the direction for reform in the next five to ten years and achieve a balance between resolving risks and seeking opportunities. The main agenda of the third plenum of the 18th Central Committee in 2013 was to study major issues regarding comprehensive deepening of reforms, while the third plenum of the 20th Central Committee proposes to focus on studying further comprehensive deepening of reforms and promoting China's modernization in a Chinese way. Associate Professor Fu Fangjin from the Li Kongqi on School of Business at Singapore Management University analyzed that the third plenum is expected to continue the current direction of economic development by further deepening reforms and expanding openness, building on the foundation laid before. In order to effectively expand domestic demand and enhance international competitiveness, the recent Politburo meeting proposed to flexibly use policy tools such as interest rates and reserve requirement ratios to increase support for the real economy. It also called for actively expanding domestic demand and implementing large-scale equipment upgrading and consumer goods replacement programs. The meeting also required a comprehensive study of policy measures to address changes in the supply and demand relationship in the real estate market, including the disposal of existing housing stock and the optimization of new housing supply. Ji Dongming interpreted that these statements imply that while China still has room for reserve requirement ratio cuts and interest rate cuts, it is shifting its focus from the supply side to the demand side in addressing the housing market dilemma. The series of policies recently introduced to stimulate consumer demand also indicate that the decision makers are addressing the problems and starting from the pain points in the market. All right, that's all for today's in depth hot topics. For more information, you can follow the 60O Brief website at 6 Brief. There you can subscribe to various newsletters that cater to your preferences. There are free packages available, as well as more professional paid packages for you to choose from. That's it for today's video. See you in the next one.